I love tech. I love smart home tech. I love gaming tech. I love kitchen tech. I love all, all these kind of things. It, and, it, and it connects to you know my life. So why not just make this a documentary of my life? This is the Tech Exploder podcast, conversations with tech professionals about being human in a binary world. Episode nine, Lamar Wilson. Exploder is made possible by the financial support of our patrons, like Holly Paddock. If you like what you hear, head on over to patreon.com slash Jason Howell and support the show directly. And thank you for making independent podcasting possible. Welcome to the Tech Exploder Podcast. I'm Jason Howell, and this week I have the pleasure of talking with Lamar Wilson, a guy who has cracked me up more than just a few times over the last decade or so. Lamar Wilson is a content creator who actually started his career as a technology coordinator in elementary schools. He was helping students kind of discover and utilize the technology that they had in the classroom. Then he transitioned into creating tech content on YouTube, amassed more than 2 million subscribers in the process. And more recently, in the last couple of years, Lamar has shifted his focus to vertical video formats like Instagram Reels and TikTok, where his enthusiastic, to say the least, unboxing videos earned him the moniker CEO of Unboxings from his fans. He cracks me up. His unboxings truly are unlike anything you're going to see out there. And we talk about all of this right now in the conversation that I had with Lamar Wilson. Lamar Wilson, it is great to have you here with me. It is so nice to finally get the chance to talk to you. I feel like our paths have crossed throughout our careers uh, at times, and uh, it's been a really long time since I've had the chance to talk with you so thank you for coming on to text bloater with me yeah th- thanks for having me it's been like i feel like i haven't seen you yeah like it well we haven't seen each other in person in almost a decade and i, I yeah. believe yeah, for sure yeah. for sure that but as as the internet is what it is like i still follow all your work online and i and i keep up to date on everything that you're doing and you. i think that one of the things that i really appreciate about you and i'm sure you are used to hearing this because it is so it is so like at your core is you have a wonderful sense of humor and you make me laugh and you've got such a lightness to your personality and everything that you do on YouTube. And I just have a lot of appreciation for you, especially from that perspective. You're a funny guy. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Which is not to put you on the spot to be funny suddenly, because sometimes you hear that and it's like, okay, well now I got to prove. Well, now I have to be funny. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But but you just are. Where where does that um, where does that like that drive that excitement come from? And uh, particularly as it relates to the world of technology, because there's you know a lot that we focus on, and you yeah. bring that spark to tech. Like, has that kind of spark always been there, or where does that come from? Yeah, you know what? It comes from a, a place of appreciation, and I don't know if that sounds yeah. cheesy or not, but nope. But you know, I I, I, I came. It. Came up, I don't, you know, like, you know, I'm 46, so I came up in the era where it really, I mean, tech was around, but not, not in the household at all. Mm. And we, you know, I, you know, really wasn't until my high school years where I started, you know, where I had the opportunity to work on computers on a regular basis, and you know, and like, you know, it was. I it was the time I graduated when Windows 95 came out. Now Windows Windows 95 was the was the push of that's when everybody. Kind of, kind of jumped on board. So, oh yeah, I, I, I was just, moment. I, yeah, I've just, I've just kind of been around before that and after. Mm-hmm. And I just have a appreciation of this, and I just try not to take it too seriously. I, I, I think, uh, and that's not to to say that I, I, I'm acting silly with it, but I just, I'm, I'm happy and I'm a jovial, whatever, because I just appreciate that these things exist in my generation. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, if I just, you know, the generation before, I would have no, you know, barely idea, any idea what any of this was. I wouldn't have known any of this. So I, I think, um, I think it just comes from a deep rooted seed of appreciation. Just to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. 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 And I mean, there is something very playful about technology that, you know, is is something that yeah. we can connect to. At the same time, like you said, like it it is also possible to look at the world of technology through you know, through the eyes of like, I don't know, you know, in, in relation to, to things like AI and stuff through the eyes of suspicion or criticism or control or whatever. But really at the core of it, like the th- I feel like the thing that is so 
like the thing that I connect with when it comes to technology on a deep seated level is that kind of playfulness, that, that kind of ability mm. to look at something through eyes of wonder and be like, oh, I can't believe that we could do that with this thing, that that thing didn't exist and now it does. And yeah. it's just amazing that it can do what it does. I completely agree. And I've been able to see that wonder in my, you know, my past life through, through children. I worked at, uh, mm -hmm. at a school for the, uh, you know, my, fir my first career was, was working in elementary school and I was a tech coordinator. So I was able to, uh, you know, this is in, this was 2000, you know, late nineties to, you know, 2006 or so. Uh, mm -hmm. and I was able to see at that core, them discovering, you know, just I just remember a, a kid discovering a laptop and discovering that a computer could be portable, and you know, and and the things they can look for on the, on the internet and you know, documents they create, just just things to make their classroom experience better. And I'm looking at it from my perspective as when I was a student, man, I would have loved, I would have oh, killed, yeah, to have these tools, and they have these tools at their disposal and just to see the wonder in their eyes. Cause I worked at a, um, uh, uh, inner city school in Chicago. So, uh, mm -hmm. just, there just wasn't the resources, unfortunately that, that, uh, other schools may have had at the time. So when I pushed to get those resources, you know, there was just, they didn't have them at home, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. so school became this, this haven of, of, of knowledge and of just look at all the cool stuff we have at our school. You know that that we don't have it at home. So seeing it from the uh, wonder of a you know child's eye, and and you know that that made me appreciate it a lot more. Yeah. What what kind of uh, hardware? So this is like what mid late nineties when you were doing this job. And yeah, the the actual tech coordinator job was two uh, thousand one to two thousand six. So we're oh, okay. So, so we're a little yeah, later yeah, than that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at um, I don't know which one. I mean, that was definitely Windows ninety eight uh, for, yeah. for sure. But uh, yeah, at that point, yeah. For sure. So so just yeah the. the Dell's in the classrooms, Dell, Dell yeah. desktop computers. Uh, I think we had some HP laptops that were uh, in our laptop cart. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. It was so, but yeah, and then uh, and as I progressed, on, then I forgot what year. I think it was 2010, 2011, when I was a consultant for the for the schools to see the first time a kid got an iPad. We we mm -hmm. did a pilot program where we we sent we got five schools and we sent them iPads. And just to, that, that's what changed me. Like, I was not an Apple person before that. Not at all. Mm. You know, but when I, when, I, when I saw the kids working on a laptop, how quickly they picked it up. They just knew what to do with it. They yeah, just, very it just intu felt, highly intuitive, yes. So, yeah, they feel so natural. And, and I just saw this, and I was like, this is, I'm, I'm at the right place at the right time. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and it sounds like the time that you were doing what you were doing at that point, that was well before even Chromebooks existed. You know, and I, I have two daughters, and they're mm -hmm. they're firmly, you know, one's going into high school, one's going into junior high, and I mean, most of their experience has been, like you said, either iPad, which came a little bit later. Well, I'm sorry, which came a little bit earlier, um, or now it's it's Chromebooks. And oh, okay, I see what you say. Yeah, yeah, and and mm. so and actually, yeah. So so my older daughter, she's she's been on Chromebooks for like three years. My younger daughter has been doing the iPad. I think and I think for that specific reason, right? Like there there's such an intuitive approach to the tablet. Not to mention kids nowadays, like from such a young age, they have access to touch screens, be it their parents' phones or, you know, the, the tablet that was, that is basically their, their vector for watching cartoons and stuff when, you mm -hmm. know, when the parents need to get something done. And yeah. so that intuitive quality to it, it's just so different. I guess what I'm realizing is it's so different from our perspective, because I think you and I are pretty close yeah. to the same age. And I had a very similar childhood where there weren't, you know, the, it was before the time of the computer in the classroom. I think the first time I saw a computer in the classroom was like in the sixth grade and it was a Commodore 64. And, you know, it's just a much different time than what very, we're talking about now, different. where everything is built around the computer, because that's just the skill that we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or do what I, we do. I remember in 2000, my, um, because I was I was subbing in a in a classroom that uh for for a while for about a few few months, and there was no desktop 
computer in there. I mm-hmm. brought mine from home. I had I had one that I got. And I brought it from home. Just like you know, I first of all I needed a computer in the classroom. You know, because I I inputted sure. the grades before teachers were putting the grades in. I was I was I was doing it, and also um, I just I just felt like the kids needed access to it, and uh, they they were fighting like literally fighting. I had perfect behavior because they all wanted a computer. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was great. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you know, yeah. and then and and then we were able to yeah, roll that out. Yeah, so. So again, yeah, a lot, a, a lot of my basis for tech really. I mean, it goes before that when I was younger, but but yeah. really seeing it in use with with young people, and I, you've seen it with your family, just just how sure. they just pick up things super quick, uh-huh. you know. And it's kept me it's kept me fresh, uh, even though I don't work with you know the schools directly now. It it gave me a basis to like to do what I do now. Sure. So then, so then let's take a step back a little bit um, and kind of the the seedling that leads to your kind of it, it, the the impetus of actually getting into schools and working with kids on computers and stuff with when you were younger kind of the beginnings of your fascination with tech what are some of your earliest uh, like tech memories and i mean they might not have anything to do with computers but like i remember you know disassembling a radio when i was r- really young just to see like what's on the inside and everything did you have was there a sense of curiosity around technology when you were much younger yeah I, and again I, yes and i was you know unfortunately you know i was you know latchkey kid so i didn't have you know uh, as you know that generation uh so i didn't have a lot of uh access to resources and things but i remember my mom bought me I guess the greatest thing she got me it was nothing to do with tech initially, but do you remember the uh, the World Book Encyclopedia? So we got yeah, we got course. those, and then the Childcraft. There's a whole series called Childcraft, and and so I read through every page, every single thing. So about crafting, about building, making things. So so oh, right on. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. So I didn't have the tech. I, I wish I would have had access to building a radio. That would have been cool. Uh, so I didn't have access to that, but I but I will say as as in school, especially when I got in high school, um, it really started from I was the editor of the school newspaper, which we needed a computer for. So that was my first mm-hmm. really like in control of computer. But really, uh, in high school, like the computer lab, I I was the computer lab nerd. I fully admit it. I yeah, I embrace me it. Too. I I <laughs> I wouldn't go to lunch. I was skinny then. <laughs> you know, I would I would I would skip lunch because I just didn't like really eating during the day. I you know I, uh, so so I would skip lunch and I would hang out in the computer lab every period that I could hang out and I you know I eventually end up you know working in there. Uh, but the, yeah, that that was my earliest memories were just soaking up so much information. We had a pretty decent computer lab in the in the uh, I was in high school from ninety one to ninety five. Mm-hmm, so we had, mm-hmm. we so we we had we had a, a decent computer lab, uh, Windows three point one or three point zero or whatever, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, and then from there I I got a job. My first main job was at Best Buy, and mm-hmm. in ninety four, that's okay. what did it right there. That was that was my dream. And you were and I got still to work, in school at that point, right? I, I was still in school, yeah, and I got to okay. work in I got to work in the uh, in the computer department, and then and then once I. I didn't get bored with it, but they needed help elsewhere. So I I, I learned TVs, I learned uh, audio, video, I learned mm-hmm. I learned every department. Uh, but the computer computer department was my core. So a lot. Of, if it hadn't been for Best Buy, I don't know if I would be doing what I do now. If that's not yeah. an endorsement for Best Buy, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> right, Best Buy. Yeah. Meanwhile, like Best Buy, I, I had to stop myself and think for for a second. Like Best Buy still around? Because you know the 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 um the place in technology for these brick and mortar tech stores. You know, like walking into a Best Buy. That used to be the kind of experience where you go in there and like you could burn yeah. a couple of hours just, you know, as a oh, tech yeah. fanatic yes. going in there and just twiddling the knobs and going. I remember going into the stereo department, you know, really kind of testing the sound systems, even though I didn't Absolutely. have the, the money or the ability to buy something like that. But just mm-hmm. loving the experience of being surrounded by all this stuff that that I enjoyed, you know, at my Absolutely. fingertips. Absolutely. I, lo- I love doing that. Every every yeah. yeah every every week was in a, was that I, I would take manuals home any new computer 
I take manuals home and, and and study them and learn them so I, so I know how to help the customers. Yeah, I was I, I was fully involved, man. RTFM, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Are you are you a manual reader now? Like I like over time, we have probably just kind of built up so much technology that we're like, yeah, no, I, don't, I don't I don't need, need a to, manual. I get in trouble for that still because I because I'm I'll get stubborn. I don't need this manual. Yeah, and 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 then Me I'll too. get it. Yeah, I'm doing a video and and I realize, oh crap, I should have read I should have read the manual. It was right there. The right, answer that right I've been like page figuring out because I know enough about it. It was yeah. just right there on page three all along. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So what about what about the early internet? It seems like everybody, mm. you know, and especially in doing doing this podcast more, I'm realizing everybody seems to have a really uh, a a clear kind of view into either a moment or experience that made them realize, holy cow, like this changes everything. And, you know, when the internet came onto the scene, it was, it was so much different th than anything that we had really experienced before. I mean, BBS's bulletin board systems was, was along those lines. So it wasn't completely new territory, but the scale was just so such that it was just, you know, it seemed like magic to a certain degree. Do yeah. you have any kind of early internet any uh, perspective or, or a story that, that you can share that really kind of made you realize, oh, my goodness, this this changes everything? I, I think to per, from the perspective, I, I think, again, work, working in a store now in the after I graduated high school, um, mm -hmm. I ended up working at uh, Office Depot for a few years in their computer mm -hmm. lab, uh, department, which was uh, even a step up because now, now we're in the Windows 95 phase. Now we're in the in the face where more and more people are getting computers, Macs are in the stores. And then so I I I I think I think that era of just learning and seeing like something like that Marvel me was uh what was the name of it? Just having a on the encyclopedia on the C D. The you mm -hmm. know the, the yeah. I forgot yeah, what yeah, it was called in multimedia. I don't know what it's called in Car Encarta or, or I forgot the oh. name of it. Yeah. yeah, I do yeah. remember Encarta. Yeah, I okay. believe it was. I believe it was that. And I, I and I lived. And in being CIA. a fan of Encyclopedia, who had read them cover to cover, go. now suddenly yeah. having it on this plastic disc. I mean, that's yes. ma that's magical right there. That's Absolutely. magic right there. Also, an Encyclopedia Brown fan, by the way. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> not not related Anything to tech. encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and I rem I remember being able. I lived in Seattle uh, in the nineties, late nineties. So I, I remember. Answering some newspaper ad uh, for Microsoft to go and do like a, a study, and and then every like you go for an hour and like you know they would show you some new pro uh, products, um, and you know I never been a Microsoft, I was, so I was like yeah I'm go I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, but yeah they mm -hmm. end up giving me uh, I believe what if it's called Encarta if I'm correct in the name of it yeah. I remember getting that whole set for free from them for doing the survey. And I was like, oh my God, I have the, I have the world, you know, yes, it had to be updated every, you know, every year or whatever, but, but, but so um, did your actual insight, like volumes of encyclopedia. It was like yeah, your encyclopedia, the old school version, it was locked into the data set, put that in quotes that yeah. existed at that time. That was just the paradigm that we followed, right? That's, that's what we had. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. then it eventually became online, you know, then you had, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, Wikipedia, which was in this development, but but still seeing that massive amount of information at my fingertips and at the world's fingertips, it, it's mm -hmm. it's mind blowing. When you come from like your kids wouldn't understand that, right? No, but no, when no. you cut, oh, Absolutely. but you would when you come mm -hmm. from not having. Say, I had you know that whole part of my life. I'm just we were just born at a very unique time that we you are. we lived in both worlds like that almost equally. You know, you, and mm -hmm. you know you get to see. You know, and that you know has how we were growing up, not having any of these tools. And all of a sudden, we have wireless phones, and we have uh, the Palm Trio, which is one of my favorite phones of all time. You know, now I have all of this in the palm of my hand, and I'm yeah. It's it's it can be overwhelming at times to like, but again, I still have that appreciation that these tools existed, yeah. And I got and I was able to get things done faster, and it helped my business honestly. You know, because I, I stayed as long as I stayed ahead. One or two steps ahead of the client, I always had a job. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. That's, that's a pretty that's a pretty smart approach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, Encarta. So I just looked it up on on Wikipedia of all places. There you go. Uh, published uh, by Microsoft from 1993 to 2009, and yes, of course, okay. originally sold on CD-ROM and then eventually DVD-ROM. 
And then, you know, the online stuff, obviously, I'm guessing at 2009, pushed it entirely out of existence just because yeah, yeah. it's not needed anymore. And not to mention, like, 2009 has got to be the point at which we start, you know, seeing the the kind of omission of CD drives and, you know, disk drives in our computers. Now you can't, now yeah. you have to you go out of your way to even buy something to, to load those, so... Yeah, exactly. my how times change. At what point did you, like, I'm I'm kind of thinking of the the time scale here. You're you're working, you know, jumping ahead a little bit. You're you're working with the schools and doing your awesome work there. Mm-hmm. At what point do you does your does your focus shift away from that and into realizing, oh wait a minute, I can like go on YouTube, this like entertainment technology space. And, you know, create create content that's more about entertainment and informative, of course, but it's a totally it's it's like on some hand, it's different because you're, it's a very production oriented direction. But on some mm-hmm. hands, actually, now that I think about it, it's kind of the same because you are educating, you are kind of sharing mm-hmm. knowledge with people in that regard. It was a complete and utter accident. <laughs> oh really? It was, it was never. I never had any inkling of being a cr- creator, dude. I was fine with what I was doing. I had when I left the school system in 2006. Uh, I left. I was working at one school. I left to start a business, so I became a tech coordinator. Uh, what well, was a tech coordinator there? I became a tech consultant. Excuse me. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, you know, built built my business. Then I ended up working. Then I got at a federal grant. I was working with with the Chicago Public Schools, so I, we I ended up working with a total of like fifty schools in this federal grant under technology and reading uh, literacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a five year grant. So I so it was you know I think it ended in 2010, 2011. So I remember in two thousand eight. Um, yeah, yeah, in two thousand eight, I. Uh, Talked to someone in the school in the schools, and they were like, "Hey, we need someone to. Uh, we don't know anything about video. We need someone to film some some of these classroom interactions and things. Uh, can your company do that? And you know, and being a newer company, I'm like, we we will figure it out. Yes, yeah. and we mean Make meaning it me. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so so I bought a camera, and this was over the Christmas break. So this was December 2008. They were like, "Yeah, let us. You know, we're gonna, we're taking a break in the new year." Well, uh, you know, let me let's see what you what you what you know. So during the break, I I was playing with the camera and I was just coming up. Okay, I, I would come up with the skit or something. I just wanted to test to see how the camera was and and how I looked on it. And then I just uploaded it to YouTube just as a, well. I need someone to look look at it. And mm-hmm. I I never thought of oh I'm gonna get an audience. I just already had a YouTube account that was not being used. And so I just uploaded it, and it got view, viewers, and I started seeing these things called subscribers. And I'm just like, what, really? It, that was just a silly skit. And <laughs> so I put another one on, and, and yeah. And, and the, what was interesting, though, about this, this story does connect, though, because the school system at the time was very anti-YouTube. They blocked it, you know, because YouTube was no, unfortunately known for a lot of fights. Mm-hmm. People would post fights on there and things. So the school, So here I am now in 2009, I'm helping them with their video stuff, but I'm also have this secret life where I'm putting things on YouTube because they they had weren't fully into it, and so as I got more popular on YouTube in you know mid 2009 or so, uh, even just a you know a few thousand subscribers, one of them found out about it, and they were like, "Hey, what are you? We we see this thing on you. What are you doing?" And so I'm like, "Well, I'm not an employee for you. I don't have to. You know, right. I don't have to. I'm you, doing my thing." Know. Yeah, but I explained. I explained what I, I explained what I was doing and how I was integrating technology. You know, I was talking about tech and talking about mm-hmm. uh, you know stuff with the classroom, and they they dug it. They were like, "Yeah, keep keep doing what you, what you're doing." So, uh, yeah, it started from complete boredom, accident, just wanted to play with a camera, and it turned into this thing. And then, yeah, I, he, now we go to 2012. Uh, you know, the the grant is done, so I'm like, do I continue with this YouTube thing? Do I can I mean it's working. I'm making start making some money off this. Can can this be a thing, or do I want to keep trying to scrap and consult and build websites? I think I was also a website builder for some of the school. So I'm like, yeah. so I made a I made a call to to go the video route, and here we are. What 15 years later, and it's still yeah. still going strong. Different formats I'm doing right now, but it's it's still it's still working. 
You are. You are. And I want to talk to you about that because I'm super fascinated about this. We're going to yeah. take a super quick break and we're mm-hmm. going to talk a little bit about the format shift that you've had in the last couple of years and uh, why you are referred to as the CEO of unboxings. We got to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just one second. All right. So you've been doing the YouTube thing now for quite a few years. You're, I'm looking at the page right now, 2.13 million subscribers on your main channel. Do you have just one channel on YouTube? On YouTube, I do. Yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I know you're also doing like TikToks and, and other, other avenues, which if you had to pick one platform that is your, the, the one you most enjoy working with. Oh, don't do that. I know. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's hard to do. Yeah. No, no, well, you no. Know, but they they each do not, things a little bit differently. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I say I have more, I have more enjoyment on TikTok, but okay. I'm I have but a, a business success is actually way more on Instagram. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, and Instagram is. I, I consider Instagram my home base in a lot of ways uh, because I diverted from YouTube. You know, because yeah. Instagram is where Instagram people come to follow you there because they they want they want to see you for you. And so yeah. and so and so you know, Instagram has the stories, it has the reels, it has regular posts. Uh, now now by extension, it has threads. You know, uh, so it, it has a lot. Instagram has a lot to offer, uh, in my opinion, for for myself. So I, I look at that as my base, but I, I tend to have more enjoyment on TikTok because that 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 um I don't know that the algorithm is is great over there. I mean the algorithm is incredible. You know, it's yeah. it's funny that you mentioned this about you know because they are all very different and in my short kind of like independent experience with creating content that I don't have, you know, a uh a, a company that is that has a team devoted to all the different things, I'm mm-hmm. now in a position of understanding which place is best for what. And I think as you're talking through this, I think it kind of answers at least a part of one of my questions, mm-hmm. which was you switched a couple of years ago. Uh, I can't remember how many years ago away from the standard kind of like horizontal, you know, format mm-hmm. to go entirely vertical for the most part. Right. And I, and I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing right yeah. now that is because TikTok, at least until recently, TikTok has been, you know, pretty much entirely vertical. Instagram is, you're going to see, I mean, an insane amount of vertical there, probably more than any other format. YouTube now has its shorts. So they're, Mm -hmm. they're adaptable to that. Once you focused on vertical over horizontal, which for purists can be really hard to do, you know, we've been around long enough that it's like, no, the right way is horizontal, but that isn't necessarily the right way now. Like what, what motivated that change? And like, do you, do you enjoy working in the vertical format now that you're so yeah. used to it? Yeah. So that happened in 2021. And yeah, the, the short version of that is, um, I got burnout. I was doing the mm-hmm. same, same ish thing. I could tell yep. the audience was burned out from it. Uh, things were kind of stagnant. I just, uh, so I knew, and then, you know, that was during pan- height of pandemic. Uh, well, I was home a lot, so I had more time to think and test out things and i just wanted to do something different i had always regretted that i missed the vine bandwagon you know mm-hmm. i i kind of mm-hmm. i kind of laughed it off oh, it is. and you know and, and but it was great for so many people's careers i liked watching them but i, I never jumped on uh but yeah d- during 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 the pandemic i was just like yeah i'm just i'm tired of doing the same thing i've been doing it for what thir- 12 13 years at that point i just yeah. wanted to do something different and during that time, now from a business financial point of view, you know, some people are like, what are you, are you doing? But most of my brand integrations that were coming in were all asking for vertical. They were all asking for Instagram uh, uh, stories, Instagram reels, uh, TikTok. TikTok was early then, but they were testing it out mm-hmm. on TikTok. YouTube shorts had just came out. And so... I just knew I didn't want to do both because I was out for a while. I was doing both videos. I was doing a, a regular and then cutting it down to shorter. The shorter ones were the one that was blowing up, going crazy. And and they weren't like short, like you get less information. They were just quicker, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, more efficient. And so I started thinking, why am I doing double work here? Totally. Like, if I can, why, well, yeah, why am I talking about this, this headset for eight minutes over here and get this amount of views and I could do it here in a minute and, and people get what they need out of it. And it, and it's completely, you know, blowing up. 
And so just from a bandwidth point of view and from a business point of view, I was like, yeah. I need to make a decision. I could continue to do both. And I did for the first part of 2021. And then it just it just became, man, I just I need to focus on one thing and do it well. I've already done the widescreen. I've established myself. We're good. It's nice knowing you. It's a good retirement. Now this is the, this is the next era of, of my life. And I got to tell you, this is point of view. It's in the last three years, I've done better than I had in that previous 12 years. Interesting. From now, do you think that the previous 12 years were necessary to get to the point yes. to where it paves the path for you to do yeah. that? Much I knew you were going to ask that. Yeah. And, yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. And I, no, I, that's why I don't discount the last 12. I'm not saying, oh, I, I made a mistake. I no, mean, it all builds. Yeah, we're always building and growing and, and everything. It, it's important. No, yeah. it, I would not be able to do, do it now had I, you know, come from nothing. I don't think. Mm-hmm. So having that has definitely been, been what's essential. But I do think anyone... Who are who's starting out yourself or anyone who's starting? Uh, they, I think you don't necessarily need that that background. There's people who come in now who have who've never created anything in their life, and they're oh for sure they got million they get millions of views. It's it's a mm-hmm. it's such an interesting platform for technology too because when I got on TikTok, there just wasn't a lot of hardly anyone was doing anything tech related, unboxings, mm-hmm. nothing like that. So I'm not saying I was first, but I was one of the the first. Because it was just dances, you know, everybody was dancing yep. and singing and lip syncing. And then I, I brought you know, this informational entertaining side to it with technology. And it's done really well over over there. Now everybody's over there with, with technology. But but I, I, I think it was that was a good time to to jump in. And I I've been having a I tell you, Jason, I've been having a ball with it. I so it so, I it, so actually, it achieved the 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 uh the desired outcome for you, which was you were burning out. You would kind of, you'd done what you'd done at that point. And I could totally understand that doing something for 12 years, no matter how successful it is, if you're still doing the same type of thing, 12 years later, like you want to evolve, you want to grow. This was enough of a transition, even though it's related with what you were doing before, but it changes it enough to where you're having as much fun as you are right now. That's definitely yeah. something, uh, something to pay attention to. That's important. That's cool. For, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a time yeah. of my life right now. <laughs> oh, right on. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then do you feel like um, it like it's easy to look at a vertical and think, oh, well, it's l- vertical's low effort. It doesn't take much time. You know, because of the shortened amount of time, it's easy to look at vertical versus like long form 25 minute sprawling thing, which, oh my God, takes forever. You know, not only just to like, come up with you know the material to fill that time but also to record all the necessary components and then to edit it all together um i don't know how how do you see the the two different approaches from like an effort standpoint that's a really good question because i I, you know i and and i've got that negative part of your question from uh, from people is it like oh you just want an easy way out or you just right totally And, and and for those people it's like I could work, I'm, dude. I'm, I'm, you know, second half of my life. So I, I can work smarter. I could work harder. Like you know, like one hundred percent. I'm, I'm, I'm working more efficiently for me and my energy level in that in that sense. Because uh, I and I have been doing one way for so long. But uh, but also, yes, there are smaller videos. But I find myself doing more content. I'm I'm doing yeah. more things. Whereas one video can sometimes take half a week. Or a week to do for some, you know, depending on what you're working on, I could put out 10, five, 10 uh, videos of varying different things during that time. Uh, yeah. Lately, has I have, you know, because I've been do, working on some background stuff, it hasn't been that kind of consistency, but I'm trying to get back to that. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it, it's social content. So, you know, I'm a so, you know, so I, I look at it like that. So, it could be looked at as throwaway content, but I don't, I don't, I, I, I try to make mine where, yeah, it's social content, but it's, it's valuable. Right. It can be valuable to you. Hey, this thing came out. I want to show you this, this yeah, Oreo just did something with Star Wars. Let me show you that. Uh, yeah. Razor just yeah. came out with this RGB microphone. Let me show. So there's just, what it is. is just moments in time of things that I'm experiencing in my life. It's my tech lifestyle. There you, you know, go. It's it, yeah. And that's a I, and that's so, a huge driver of 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 uh, what people love about social media, and not just yes. entertainment content, but 
a big part of the social experience is mm. knowing like, oh yeah, I like that person. I like that human, not just the information that they're sharing, but I want to know more about that person and why they're sharing what they are. That's actually a, yeah. that's actually a really great way for, you know, to describe why I wanted to do this show because like, I know mm -hmm. a lot of wonderful people, yourself included, that I'm like, I want to know them on a deeper level. Like what drives them and motivates them in the world yeah. of technology to do what they do. And that's a really fantastic answer. You, you've totally got my, my mind is like turning. There was a, there was a moment like five minutes ago where I was listening to you. I was like, Oh, you know, finger on my lips. Like I've got some ideas suddenly. Um, awesome. That's really cool, man. Reinvention's important. Yeah. It looks like you've mm -hmm. really done a great job with that. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, the, the YouTube crowd of tech, tech tubers, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. I have nothing against them. It never was for me. Like, like I've always, re I won't say resisted that crowd, but I, you know, they're, they're, they're good. They're excellent. At what they do. They, they're, you know, that's been established. I just didn't mm -hmm. want to be yet another tech channel, yet another, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so, it, you know, so like what's unique to me, me. Mm -hmm. So I love tech. I love smart home tech. I love gaming tech. I love kitchen tech. I love all, all these kind of things. It, and, it, and it connects to you know my life. So why not just make this a documentary of my life? And so social media content allows you to do, to do that. And if something inspires you, which is the point, you know, it's not just say, hey, look at all the cool stuff I have. Hey, I have this stuff. Here is how it's helping my life. Maybe you see this and get, ooh, I, 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 I might need something like that that mm -hmm. could help me and make my life a little bit better or make me happier uh, mm -hmm. for, for a while, too. So that's really the, the, the drive behind what I do is just how to help people understand how to make tech work for them because everybody has tech, not doubting that. You know, you know, most people have a phone. Most people have some kind of tech in their life. It's everywhere. It wasn't like early two thousands where some people, you know, like it's it's everywhere around us. But everybody doesn't know how to use it the best way to enhance their life, mm -hmm. and that, and that's where I feel like you know uh, you know people like us can come in and give them that real world. Hey, I I live with this device. That's why I love when people do videos. I I live with this for a week. Let me tell you about it. You know, mm -hmm. that's you know, that, that's, that's the real it. juice. That's yeah. the juice right yeah. there. Yeah. there. And I totally agree. Like there, are, you can you can do, and we're, and we're kind of getting into the realm of of another question I have for you, which is the CEO of unboxings. But you can you can do the here's a product, here's all the specifications, and here's what it's capable of. Um, and that only really tells a very small part of the story. Really, at the end of the mm -hmm. day, I feel like a product success is, does it deliver on the promise that it it brings with it? If a product is made and it is proposed to be this thing that does these things, at the end of the day, if you get that technology, does it deliver on that promise? And if it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much memory it has or what kind of processor it is underneath <laughs> yeah. or all yeah. that really nerdy, geeky stuff that I also you know, am interested in, sure. But sure. really, at the end of the day, I just want to know, is it a good product that's going to deliver on that promise? Now, you people know you like <laughs> as the CEO of Unboxing, and I'm just, oh, uh, yeah. I'm really curious to know where that moniker came from is this something that you came up with or your community came up that will, with for you that would be that come so from? that would be so arrogant if i came up with that myself <laughs> they're, they're, they're really you know what there are people out there that would do that I, I would not put you in that camp but yeah I'm i curious. mean i mean a decade ago i playfully called myself the world's funniest tech reporter but that was just that was just to get people's attention uh yeah. and it, you know and because it, it was like i knew i was it was just funny no the seat yeah, it the worked seat, it, I it, mean, it, it worked for worked. me. I was like, "Yeah, he is pretty damn funny." I mean, that, that's how I got to know you all. That's how I got in the network. Yeah, because because, because of absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, no, it, it it came from the community, specifically on TikTok. The TikTok had had this thing. I don't I don't see it as much anymore. But if someone does a lot of one thing and they and and they're good at it, they'll call them. Oh yeah, you're you're the CEO of of drama, or you're the CEO of movies. Uh, you know, yeah. and it's, it's it was just it's just acknowledging that you are a person that that they look at it and, and that does a lot of that. So I, I constantly would get in my con, uh, comments. Oh man, look, it's the CEO of unboxing there. He, he's back at it again. And I cracked up and I'm just like, this is, this is hilarious. Cause it wasn't just one time I saw it in several videos and I was also about to update my profile. And I was like, that's, that's so cool because it, that will, that's, that's a conversation starter. Instead of Absolutely. just saying, you know, like right now my, my bio is a little boring cause I, I'm, I'm in a, 
period of adjusting it. But that has to go back in there because because they just make it it, make, it just makes people ask what wait, what is that what do you mean what is what is that and then yeah. I get to explain uh, why I primarily love unboxing so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, it also it also lends a certain uh, bit of authority and uh, understanding, like no know, know how knowledge around the art of the unboxing because it it is kind of an art form, right? Like you can. You know, I've been playing around with it a little bit and just really like cranking up the compression on the audio and going total natural sound and unboxing and, you know, going for the ASMR thing, which isn't necessarily my thing, but it's not my thing either. But I, but I tell you, people love it. There's something about the experience yes. of taking this box that has this thing that you desire inside and going through the motions. Like, what do you think makes a really great unboxing? Yeah, so I and again the people who do the a- ASMR there there's some relaxing in there's some channels that are, that are just yeah. amazing with with that and they 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 get into that emotion that people want to want to see and so my my point of view is how can I this person doesn't have this thing in front of them and yes. how 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 can they live vicariously through me in there this in this in this moment and so why you see excitement with me well number one it's not fake because i am genuinely excited because i mean just for a lot of reasons i didn't have presents growing up uh i didn't you know we didn't celebrate holidays and things so uh that just comes from a oh my god i got i got this cool thing i got this cool thing to open so i am always genuinely excited yes i know my camera so it does i do ham it up a little a little bit but it it, co- it comes it comes from a deep rooted place of just yeah, it's a, being, priv- a it's a privileged place to come it's from. It's a too, privilege. Right? It's a privilege. I'm honored when it's you know an Apple would send me something or a Google or, or is any like these are multi billion like and I'm just and I don't consider myself big at all. Like there's so many people that are bigger than me, and I'm just like they thought of me to send this. Mm-hmm. Now I do know it's PR. I mean we're not stupid, you know. Like, like these are PR mm-hmm. boxes, but but so many people don't have that privilege. So I'm honored for that. So when I, when I open that box, you know, and I, I'm excited and I get to show people, Hey, this is this, you know, what this cool thing is and get to demo it. Uh, Even a short form, they get just a little, little taste of it. And I I just think that goes a long way. And they just, yeah, people love the aspect of seeing someone else enjoy something so they can, has some enjoyment in their life, life too. So it, to me, it's more about showing that. Oh yeah, this has a cord. This has a USB C. This has the power. That's fine, and I show those things. But like the excitement of I got, I just got the new iPad, guys. Oh my god, you know, mm-hmm. I, I had this, I had this old one, but I got this new one. The screen, oh man, the screen is brighter. Oh, it is. Yeah. You know, so that's where I come from, and I, I think most people like those type of. Uh, unboxing, yeah. so I guess that makes me the <laughs> the CEO of it. I laugh every time I hear that because I never say it out loud uh, myself. But but that, yeah, so when you said it, I was just laughing inside. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a thing. <laughs> and see, you just stopped yourself there. You couldn't even finish. You couldn't even, couldn't say even finish I'm the it. CEO of unboxing. Yeah, it just, it just sounds weird <laughs> to call yourself something like that. But you know, yeah, it's it's fun. It's you. it's it's fun though. I I, re- yeah. I love I love unboxing. I love the wonder, you know, the yeah. uh, behind it, and I and I love that I'm helping someone to to learn something at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. really is kind of the one of the pinnacle ways that, as a technology fan, someone who who gets excited for themselves about technology, that's that's what makes you a, go- a great unboxer is because of that excitement. That so much of what we do in technology and media creation and everything, I, I think if we're doing it right, we're tapping into that like that shared excitement, that shared passion that we all have about technology, and mm, yeah. it doesn't get much kind of ner- you know more nerdy <laughs> than I just got this thing and I get to open it. And I, you know, like one of my favorite things, peeling off the plastic sheet that, that covers the screen or whatever, you know, being the, being the first person to take that thing off, even though some (laughs) people leave it on because they think that's the way that's no way that's the wrong way. You got to peel that sucker off and it's never looked and will probably never look as brand new and amazing as it does right in that moment. And that just makes me happy. <laughs> my, my, my most controversial unboxings that still to this date are controversial, and I love it as I lean into it now because I know people don't like it, uh, <laughs> is when I, um, when I unbox uh, Funko Pops and I take them uh-huh. out the box. Not only do I take them out the box, I destroy the box. And what's really... 
Uh, but I just and, and so that started as an accident because I was actually just excited, like, oh my god, I got this new, and so I just tore the box open and opened it, and people were freaking out. Collectors like, you don't oh, take yeah. this out there. How dare you? And then Funko started re re reposted them themselves. They were like, we love this, and and yeah. that that just inflamed them more. So I just dig into it just for fun. Like I make sure every every time I I do it because I am excited about it. Also, it's a it's a little plastic toy that totally. I don't find enjoyment in the box. It should yes. come out the box so I can enjoy it, enjoy it. So yeah, I will always Absolutely. always do it. And so I will, you know, like my cherry. You know, you know this reference here. Yeah, Pee Wee's yep, Playhouse. Yep, yep. Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, I would, I would, I, I would always have mine out the box for sure. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Keeping keeping the stuff on the on the inside. Like I, I get the desire, I get the the kind of collector's mentality of oh, but then it's pristine. And there is something to be said for like that that nostalgic kind of hit of of seeing the the original packaging and everything. But oh no man, doubt, I want it no out doubt. of there. I, I want it out of there. I want it like that's the 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 real kind of yeah. success. And also, I'm not I'm not running a store. I'm yeah, not trying to totally. I'm not trying to have or a gallery a box. Yeah, a whole box, you know, only has so much room, man. So I, oh, yeah, I just let I just me tell enjoy you. It. Yeah, I completely get you. I totally get it. Um, finally, before we wrap this up, because I'm realizing we're right at the end of our time here, I was just like to throw in a ra- really random kind of like question about technology that you know i i don't intend for it to be difficult to think of but if something comes to mind great is there a technology that you hope someday to see in your lifetime something that maybe has been kind of in your mind and you're like you know someday technology is going to enable this and we quite aren't we aren't quite there yet i know that some of my own examples seem to tie into some of the capabilities that we're seeing from from ai right now where it's like oh wow some of these things could actually possibly happen at some point maybe it's Mm -hmm. derived from sci-fi i don't even know but what has technology given you at this point that you're hoping to see someday does anything come to mind yeah one of my favorite genres of a subgenres of tech now, I don't talk about it a lot because I'm still, you know, I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm excited about it, but I, I, I'm still trying to get other people excited about it. It's uh, smart home tech. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love, love, love smart home tech. I uh, one day I may make a whole whole thing about, <laughs> about, and there's so many people who do who do it who do it already. But so there is a movie I just looked it up because it came up in nine. It came out in '99. Uh, it has Katie Segal in it uh, from from um, from Married Children. But it's called Smart House, and it's it's a Disney movie, and it's 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 ridiculous. It's just this futuristic smart house that, you know, and, and it, it cut, things go awry in that movie. So I'm not saying I want exactly like, like that, but mm-hmm. when I saw that, I was like, man, before I perish, I would love that full automated type of smart house. I walk in the house. Good evening, Lamar. Oh, uh, you know you're. You know, what do you what would you like for dinner today? Here are your messages. Like just like that kind of AI. And that's why, you know, when, when people are so, you know, anti AI, I, I get the concerns, but I'm but I'm like, if we want the future, there we have to deal with the pains that are gonna come to get there. Yeah. And these yeah. are some of the cool things we get. I want my, my house to know everything about me. I, it needs to, because I live there. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. I want I want these kind of cool cool developments and all that. So I, I really want the the full vision of uh, the smart the smart home. That's just it's coming. It's not that's that's I, that's something. I mean, some argue that it's already here. Uh, I have you know home pods all around the house. So you mm-hmm. know there's there's versions uh, versions of it. But I just mean like that full like autonomous thing would be really cool. Um, you know some kind of. Minority Report type of holographic screen that pops yeah, up and yeah. I can get things done. Uh, I, I just I, I marvel. I, I love seeing those kind of things. You know, I'm a big Star Trek geek. Um, yeah. That you know, so I see things like that, and I just like, man, I would love if we had that in our lifetime. And we're getting there. We're really we're it's just accelerating there. how fast we're absolutely we're, how we get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there and we're and you know, once again, like you said, we're not quite there yet, but the seeds have been planted and more and more of the technology that would enable that is building up around it. I think you're absolutely right. The the real kind of uh hurdle there is are we willing to let go of certain things in order to enable something that smart to exist? And yeah, you just have absolutely. to ask yourself like if that's what you truly want, 
then there are certain things that we, you know, ooh, hold too close to the chest that we maybe yeah. need to, you know, consider loosening a little bit in order to get it. It's all trade offs at this point. Yeah. I yeah. think a lot of what I'm hearing with that tends to be our generation because we mm -hmm. lived in both worlds. Yeah. Whereas your, right. your, your kids' generation will have no, like, duh, of course we want this. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, so it's just it's just get getting us to get on that side saying it's okay. It, you know, there are challenges with it, of course, but but uh, yep. yeah, I I just that's why I just like continuing my education of, of this and learning, uh, learning about this because it's just exciting and I just I, again it's just something I want to see, uh, yeah. you know, before I get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of getting the heck out of here, maybe that was a horrible transition. It is the end of this interview. No, uh, that's why I said it. <laughs> I know, right, Lamar? Thank you so much. I'm so happy we got the chance to do this. And uh, I feel like I'm it wasn't really, enough time. Yeah, feel, yeah, we, yeah. We got to do this yeah. again. Absolutely. Well, I, yeah. I really appreciate all the work that you're doing. I appreciate your humor. I appreciate how good you are at what you do. And I want more people to know about the work that you're doing. Um, where would you point people to if you wanted people to, to check you out in, in a place or two? Would it just Are they just looking for your name and you pretty much got yeah, the yeah. username locked up everywhere? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm at Lamar. I'm at Lamar Wilson everywhere. That's Lamar with two R's. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Instagram is a great home base. Uh, if if you want to check me out there, because all of my content does filter there, but I post the same video on six different platforms, so yeah. uh, it's a chance you'll see me. Even though you're on Snapchat, you know you can look me up. I, I I post, yeah, I post yeah, everywhere. I don't know how you do that, but uh, that's a conversation for another time. Lamar, <laughs> thank you so much. You are, you are a rock star, and I appreciate having the time to to hang out with you today. Thank you. Take care, Jason. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Huge thanks to our guest Lamar Wilson. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. Listen up, everyone. We do this show uh, based on your support, really, right now. As I'm growing the Texploder podcast, it's imperative that I support the show through the fans who are enjoying it. It's really the most direct way to support us right now as we build things. So patreon.com slash Jason Howells, where you can go if you want to support the show. You do also get some perks, ad-free shows, early access to videos, a Discord community, an exclusive patrons-only pre-premiere live stream every week, and a whole lot more. You also actually have the opportunity to become an executive producer. And, uh, you know, we have some awesome executive producers this week. Jeffrey Maricini, John Cuny, Katie Lake, Bill Rudder. Y'all are awesome. Everyone who subscribes and supports this show is awesome. So thank you for helping me drive this independent podcast. Texploder podcast premieres every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on the Texploder YouTube channel with the audio podcast publishing to the feeds later that day. Just look for youtube.com slash at Texploder if you want to see the video version. And you can find everything you need to know about this show and everything I'm doing at Texploder.com. Thanks again to our guest Lamar and thanks to you for watching and listening. I'm Jason Howell. See you next week on another episode of the Texploder podcast. Podcast.